So now we're doing a system of linear equations in three variables. So you have um, systems that look like this or this. Um, you have x, y, and z instead of just x and y. Three variables. So you want to think about if you know if you have a system of linear equations in two variables, you want to have at least two equations to solve that system for an actual ordered pair. If you have three unknowns, you want at least three equations to solve for that ordered triple. You, you know, if you have four unknowns, you want four equations, and so on and so forth. So um, uh, in this case, um, I have three variables. So I wanted to show you what you know this kind of situation looks like. So each of these linear equations if we graph them separately, they represent a plane. So this is a plane, like a flat surface. This is a plane, and this is a plane. So you're talking about the intersection of three planes. And obviously, that can happen in many ways. So you have three planes intersecting in three different ways. Now, there are three cases that can happen with a system of linear equations and three variables, just as, you know, it does with two. And I took this off Google, okay? So I didn't create this, but um, you can find it on Google. Um, and again, you have one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions, right? Um, there's no such thing as just two solutions. There's no such thing as just three. It's either one, zero, or infinite. Now, obviously, if you have the one solution set, then the planes intersect at the perfect point. They intersect at one point. Um, if you have no solutions, that the planes never touch, right? They never all three intersect at all. It doesn't always have to be all three are parallel, but they all have to intersect at the same point in order to be a solution. So if they don't all intersect at the same point, then it doesn't count. Even if two of them intersect, if the third doesn't, it doesn't count as a solution to the system. Or they all three intersect at a line, which obviously every point on that line is a solution and there are infinite points on a line. So therefore, that's an infinite solution case. Um, now the solution to a system of three variables is an ordered triple with an x, a y, and a z coordinate. And we call it an ordered triple because there's three parts to it. Now, when you have a system of two equations, you don't recognize this, but you shrink down the system of two equations into an equation of one variable. <clears throat> We're going to try to take this system of three equations and shrink it down into a system of two and then shrink that into an equation of one and then backtrack again. So you go from three to two to one and then back up to solve for all the um, unknowns. So let me show you what I mean by that. Oh, so let's start with um, this system. So I have one, can you see that? So red, red's not bad, okay. Okay, so I have one, two and three equations for the system. So I want to pick a variable to eliminate. So let's, it doesn't really matter which one I pick, but once I pick it, I'm gonna eliminate that one variable to shrink this system into a system of two. So let's say I'm gonna eliminate, um, let's just eliminate x. Let's just say I'm, I want to eliminate x, okay? So that's the variable that I'm going to eliminate. So Let's start with equation one and equation two and we'll copy them down. 2x plus y minus 2z is negative one and 3x minus 3y minus z is five. And I want to eliminate x in this um, system, right? So I need the same number in front of x but opposite value. So I'm gonna multiply you know, the first equation by negative three and the second equation by two. So that's gonna create um, a system of equations that looks like this. So I have negative 6x minus 3y plus 6z is equal to 3. Everything gets multiplied by negative 3. And then the second is going to be a 6x minus 6y minus 2z is 10. And the reason that I want the same number in front of x but opposite signs is when I add the two together. Oops, so see that. <clears throat> when you add the two together, these eliminate. So now I have a negative 9y, this is 6 minus uh, 2, so plus 4z, is equal to 13. So now I have this equation of two variables, um, y and z. So I eliminated x, so now I have just y and z. So now I have to do the same thing, because I used equation 1 and 2. I have to use 3. 
But it doesn't matter if I use equation 1 or 2 with 3. So well, let's just use 1 and 3. Okay, so equation 1 is 2x plus y minus 2z is equal to negative 1. And equation 3 is x minus 2y plus 3z is 6. And I'm going to, again, eliminate x. I have to stay eliminating the same thing that I chose to begin with. So I need the same number in front of opposite signs. So all I have to do is multiply the second um, equation by negative 2. I'm going to bring it down here. So equation 1 stays the same. 2x plus y minus 2z is negative 1. And equation 2 becomes negative 2x plus 4y minus 6z is negative 12. And the reason that I want the same number in front of x but opposite signs, again, is so that when I add them together, x is eliminated. y plus 4y is 5y. Minus 6, 7, 8z is equal to negative 13. So now I have an equation here with y and z, an equation here with y and z. So I'm going to now create a system of equations of two variables with these two equations, negative 9y plus 4z. Negative 9y plus 4z is equal to, is it negative 13? Positive 13. And then this one is 5y minus 8z is equal to negative 13. So now I have this system of just two. Notice that I had to use all three equations, and I had to eliminate x every time in order to create this system of two equations with just the same two variables, y and z. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to eliminate a z in this case because it's easier, because all I have to do is take equation 1 and multiply it by 2 to get the same coefficient in front of, y, uh, in front of z but opposite signs. So that becomes a negative 18y plus 8z is equal to 26, and this becomes a 5y minus 8z is equal to negative 13. So again, when I add them together, the z's go. This is 26 minus 13 or 13. Negative 18y plus 5y is negative 13y. And now I create an equation of one variable. Right? So I went from a system of three to a system of two to an equation of one. And now I can actually solve for y by dividing both sides by negative 13. y is negative one. So now I'm able to determine what y is. Remember I said we go from a system of three to a system of two to an equation of 1, and then we go backwards again. Now that I have y, work my way back. Now I can find z. And I can use either one of these equations to find z. So let's just use 5y minus 8z is negative 13, and replace y with negative 1. And this is going to allow me to now find z. Negative 5 minus 8z is negative 13. Negative 8z is, add 5 to both sides, um, negative 8. Nice. Divide both sides by negative 8. Z is 1. Now I have y and z. Fact track. I could find x. I could plug it into either one of these. Let's just do equation 3. Bring it down. I'll bring it down here. x, what is it? Minus 2y uh, plus 3z is 6. Now I could plug in my y, which is negative 1. A little bit. Replace y with negative 1. So I have x minus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times z, which was 1, is 6. x plus 2 plus 3 is 6. x plus 5 is 6. So x is 1. So now my solution, let me make it a nice bright color. My solution to the system, because I was able to solve for a point, is 1, negative 1, 1. Okay, so that means that this is this situation where all three planes intersect at one point, one ordered triple, and this is my ordered triple. Now, if I'm not sure that I'm correct with my solution, what do I do? Plug it back into all three. It should work for all three. Uh, one, negative one, one. One, negative one, one. You could kind of visualize. So two plus one, uh, two minus one is one. Um, minus two is negative one. Three plus three is six. Minus five, one plus 2 is 3, um, plus 3 is 6. So that works for all three. So this is my solution. Um, I want to do one more example, just because of sometimes, you know, it looks funny like this. So 
you again have three equations. Um, so equation one, equation two, equation three. You still have three equations, but you know not all of them have three um, variables. The first one has x and y, the second one has y and z, and the third one has x, y, and z. So what you want to do is, again, you're trying to create a system of two. So you need to be able to eliminate a variable such that you can create a system of two, um, a system of two variables. So you, you know, I already have an equation here with just x and y, and I already have an equation here with just y and z. So what I could do is I can eliminate z with this one to get an x and a y to match and go with this equation, or I can eliminate x and get a y z equation. Um, I'm going to eliminate I'm going to eliminate z so that I get x and y. So that means I'm going to leave equation one alone because it already has just x and y, it has no z in it. So I'm going to deal with equation two and three. Okay, so let me copy it down. So I have, you know, x turn whatever y minus z is 1, and then 2x plus y plus 3z is negative 21. Um, and if, you know, if your system wasn't, you know, like organized like this to begin with, then you want to make sure that you do organize it. You know, you line up your x's, your y's, your z's, your equals, and your constants. So this one was already set up nicely like that for me. Now I want to eliminate z here. So to eliminate z, I'm going to multiply the first equation by uh, positive 3, because I just need a, a negative 3 here. I already have a negative sign. Um, let me keep it a little. So I have uh, 3y uh, minus 3z is equal to 3. And equation 2 is going to say 2x plus y plus 3z is negative 21. OK, again, I'm eliminating z here. So when I add the two together, z's are gone. I'm adding x's, so this 2x stays. Adding my y's plus 4y is equal to adding these, um, uh, negative 18. This is a preference, and for me, you know, everything is divisible by 2 here, so I can decrease my numbers. So dividing everything by 2, I get x plus 2y is negative 9. So this is now my other equation of just x and y. So remember, the point is to create a system of two equations. And I just created a, a, an equation with x and y with equations 2 and 3. Equation 1 already had x and y. So let me use equation 1 and this one that I just created here to now finish off my solution. Okay, um, I should have enough space here. So what do I do? Um, this one's easy because you can eliminate x or y, but x is easy by just multiplying everything by negative 1. So all those signs change. So that when I add the two equations together, what happens? My x's will be gone. Negative y plus 2y is y is equal to positive 4 minus 9, which is negative 5. Boom. So I went from a system of 3 to a system of 2 to an equation of 1. And now I can backtrack. Now that I know why, in this case, I can solve for x next and then go back up to um, z. Or just depending, I could use either one of these and solve whatever I want. So let's do, we'll do x next. So equation 1, I have x plus y is negative 4. And so I have x plus negative 5, so minus 5 is negative 4. Um, and therefore, x is equal to plus 5, 1. Got another nice one. So I have y, I have x, now let's find z. I could use any equation now to find z between two and z. We'll use two, it's easy. So y minus z is one. So y was negative five. Negative five minus z is one. So add five to both sides, negative z is six. So therefore z is negative six. So my solution, uh, my order triple, I could go down here. Order triple is one, negative five, negative 6. Right? Now again, if I'm not sure, then I plug it into all three of these equations and make sure that it works for all three. If it doesn't work for all three, then obviously then it's not my solution, but if, you know, I could look at it and see 1 minus 5 is negative 4, true. Negative 5 minus negative 6 is 1, true. 2 minus 5 is a, uh, sorry, let me drop something. 2 minus 5 is um, negative 3, and then 
plus negative 6 times 3, negative 18, and that works too. So this is my solution. So it is, again, this, this situation here. If I were unable to solve for any variable and I got a true statement, then it would be my infinite solution case. And if I were unable to solve for any variable and I got a false statement, it would be my no solution case.